What's up squad, it's your squid aka the Anxious Squid here at Anxious Squid Productions, finally back at it with some more reactions. I had a whole bunch filmed for the backlog but then I realised in a couple of videos time it will be my 300th reaction, so I felt like that warranted something special so I've just jumped in and recorded a couple more and you don't care anyway. These are my patrons, I like money, feel free to give me some of your money but I'ma just shut up and get into the reaction, shall I? Thanks for your patience in between uploads as always guys and if this is the first time you've seen me do me a solid and hit the subscribe button do it on blind faith you haven't even seen me react yet but please do me a solid uh yeah i've the only thing i've heard about brian france is that he fucked everything up i feel like that's the guy he's the son of another guy or something like that i don't know people have told me in the comments section that he's um he's he's the one that maybe changed to the new format, maybe, for playoffs. I, I, I could be wrong, but I could be wrong. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but I could be right. Uh, for the championship, you know, the format and to the playoffs, or... Anyway, as I said, I'm gonna shut up and get into the reaction. ...at the forefront for NASCAR's downfall for quite some time. He was a third generation chair... As always, if you wanna actually see the video there without my reaction, without me talking all the time and stuff like that, the link's in the description. Feel free to click it and CEO of NASCAR from 2003 to 2018. Whenever sports fans complain about Roger Goodell in the NFL or Adam Silver in the NBA, I just sit back and laugh because Brian Prince makes both of those guys look good by comparison. In today's video, we are going to examine NASCAR before, during, and after the Brian Prince regime. So let's get into it. Bill France Jr. took over as executive chief and CEO of NASCAR in 1972, ushering in the modern era. His time okay. running NASCAR was overwhelmingly positive because he took NASCAR from basically a regional southern sport and turned it into a national phenomenon. He was like the Vinnie Mac Sr. of uh, by racing, RJ I guess. Reynolds to sponsor the entire sport. Thus, the Winston Cup Series was born. He was able to get CBS Sports to broadcast the first ever Daytona 500 flag to flag live in front of a national audience. Good on him. race was a major success. That's one with the punch on at the end, yep. Leasing striking deals with ESPN in 1980, and then TNN and TBS in 1990. Fast forward to 1999, and France would do the unthinkable. He would work out a record-setting $2.4 billion television deal between yeah, okay. Fox, NBC, and That's pretty and big. TV. That's a big deal. He was also able to bring NASCAR into... Someone needs to do something uh, in terms of broadcast rights now, don't they? Because uh, NBCSN is getting... No more, no more of that channel. It's getting kicked off, you know what I mean? So, like, where's the NASCAR going to go? I don't know. Do we know yet? Let me know in the comments. For countries. In 1988, NASCAR ran the Goodyear NASCAR 500 over in Australia. Then from 1996 right. to 1997, they would run a couple races in Japan. Obviously, I didn't know that. That's cool. He was a terrific CEO, but he wasn't perfect. Some of the negatives on his resume include leaving the historic North Wilkesboro Speedway in the late 90s for bigger markets such as Texas and Montana. He also didn't put much of an emphasis on safety either because from 1972 to 2000, 13 drivers would die. Lastly, you That's have the rough. 2004 schedule realignment. Beginning in 2004, NASCAR would move its Labor Day date over to Auto Club Speedway, effectively replacing an annual tradition of the Southern 500. Man, no. To make this two I've reviewed a couple first, of their drinks in my the review Southern playlist. Over to the yeah, check that out. Final race of the year, replacing Rockingham. So we now fast forward to 2003, and the sport is in great health. At this point, it has become a cultural phenomenon and is fast approaching yeah. the NFL's TV ratings. It's the second most watched. It was watched a big deal then, apparently. This was its heyday. This rate could eventually be the most watched sport in the entire country. But on September 21st, 2003, NASCAR was changed forever. This morning, Brian France attended the driver's meeting for the first time as chairman and CEO of NASCAR. Right. After the driver's meeting, he stopped by to spend a few minutes right here on the wagon. First of all, congratulations. Uh, you've been busier than a rookie making his first start at Bristol. A busy week for NASCAR and for yourself. <laughs> That's, That's a hell of a thing. It's been exciting, and uh, as I said earlier in the week, I'm very motivated. And we've got such a great, passionate fan base. You can 
feel the energy here today, and I'm just excited to do my part to make sure that we're moving forward, and I'm very excited about it. Ryan France took over yeah, as right. chairman and CEO of NASCAR in 2003. Believe it or not, the first changes he makes to the sport are actually quite positive. His first move was to create a new rule that drivers were no longer allowed to race back to the start-finish line when under caution. He then negotiates a Makes brand sense. title sponsorship deal with Nextel Corporation. Thus, the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series is born. He introduces a brand new point system where only the top 10 can compete for a championship in the final 10 races. Now, this would be called the chase for the cup. The and chase. at the time, a lot of fans were pretty uh -huh. intrigued by this points format. You see, Brian France didn't always make bad decisions. <laughs> okay, now let's start getting into the bad decisions he made. The first of many bad decisions was the 2005 schedule realignment. Unlike 2004's, this one involved a lawsuit. SMI right. thought that his first race at Texas was popular enough to warrant another date. Pretty soon, the company was pressing NASCAR to give them another date, but NASCAR wouldn't budge. NASCAR eventually reached a settlement, and it was this. ISC sold Rockingham to SMI, who in turn gave the race to Texas. This not only okay. cost Rockingham right. its that makes sense. date, but left it's the convoluted, but it makes sense. Entirely. It was then announced that Darlington would lose its second race. Well, they obviously got Texas oh, second, second race. I was going to say they obviously got it back, but maybe not. Darlington to the spring for only one event. Lastly, NASCAR would move Fontana over to the there second the race central of the heading. season, replacing <laughs> Rockingham. NASCAR was making moves into bigger markets, and in the short term, it actually It's a weird worked. pink paint NASCAR job, but I like it. Peak in, in the three car as well. Brian France was named one of the Ah, oh, it's a 31, I was going to say. I was going to say. By the sporting news. Three car in pink. Year. Fucking what? <laughs> Crisis averted. I'm going to go back because I wasn't listening to this dude. Sorry, mate. For only one event. Lastly, NASCAR would move Fontana over to the second race of the season, replacing Rockingham. NASCAR was making moves into bigger markets, and in the short term, it actually worked. NASCAR would hit its peak in viewership in 2005. Brian France was named one of the five most the powerful Swans won the flag. executives by the Sporting News that same year. Long term, this would turn out to be a horrible idea. During this time, it didn't matter where the Cup Series raced because they would always put on a show with the Gen 4 cars. Unfortunately, Brian France didn't realize this because in 2007, the sport would introduce a brand new car. The car of tomorrow. Right. This car was heavily criticized for the way it looked and raced. Unlike the Gen 4, this car had more of an emphasis on safety. You could make the argument, however, that these same Gosh safety, safety. <laughs> could have been implemented in the Gen 4 cars and still be oh, okay. fine. fine. Kyle Busch's quote after winning the first car of tomorrow race says it all. I'm still not a very big fan of these things. I can't stand to drive them. They suck. Wow, all right. See a little smirk on his little smug face as well when he said it? Like... I'm still not a very big fan of these things. Look at his fucking soul patch as well. Like, fuck off. Glad he shaved that at some point. Although it is like a bit of a dickhead signifier, isn't it? Like, you see someone with a little dicky thing like that, and that's the only facial hair they have. It's sort of an indicate, like every person I've ever met with one of those, fucking toss up. Like tomorrow debut, you also had NASCAR change up its points format again. They would change the chase field from 10 to 12 drivers and also added bonus points for wins. Where's the rest of your beard, Fuck. In 2009, NASCAR introduced a brand new drug policy in light of recent failures in the early 2000s. Okay. This would lead to the infamous story of Mayfield versus NASCAR. We knew that somewhere down the line there, all the drivers felt like somebody was going to be the fall guy for the deal. The rich one was up we're out there practicing and we get done that day and they come over and you need to go to the trailer. Why? Mm -hmm. Okay, for what? Uh, random drug test. I didn't think there was anything wrong. Their policy states that if you are taking something, if you get chosen for your random, call let them know. So I got on the phone with the guy that owns the lab, Dr. Black. Jeremy's Dr. Black. Hey, Dr. Black, how you doing? Not too bad. What'd you need? Well, I'm just letting you know, you, you told us in Daytona that if we started to, you know, got tested to let you know what we're taking, and I started taking Adderall. You know, and I'm just going to let you know that I let the guy know. Adderall? What's the person your age doing taking Adderall? Why would you be taking Adderall? 
I'm like, why not? I was stunned. I was kind of like, uh, I said, for ADD? He said, you've been all these years, you never, you never had a, you know, you never took enough for ADD. Why would you start now? I'm like, you know, real offensive. I'm like, well, uh, I got assessed and my doctor put me on that. Yeah. Know, you know? Like, why the, why yeah, the fuck? Who's it to you? Yeah, What's it to well, you, motherfucker? That don't seem right. He said, he said, um, your first year A should not be taking that roll, da, da, da. I said, fuck oh, off. You got a problem. What do you mean, problem? He said, Listen, well, it looks to me like you're trying to get stimulated for, for these races. He said, tell you what you need to do is get your assessment report, blah, 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 your prescription history, send it to me, fax it to me. He said, and we'll look at it, and then everything will be fine. I said, what do you mean, everything's fine? I said, so that's all we need? He said, yeah. He said, we'll do that. We'll, take, we'll turn your test into a negative test. Said, what? Uh, you tested positive for your uh, drug test. I said, yeah, I've been working with them. I told him, you know. He said, well, you're suspended indefinitely. NASCAR. Wow. So, yeah. NASCAR had said that wow. he tested positive for methamphetamine, but one doctor from Florida had stated that it was impossible for Mayfield to use the levels of methamphetamine NASCAR claimed he did. Otherwise, he'd be dead. Mayfield has been blackballed ever since. I recently found a quote he said the whole ordeal, and it's going to make sense later on in the video. I have friends out there talking about effective drug policy. It's kind of like Al Capone talking about the effect of law enforcement. The pot shouldn't be called the kettle black. And I think the world needs to hear that too. Wow, all right. In 2012, all right. we have our third points format change in nine seasons. Along with the 12 driver That's interesting. We're going to have to look him up. As bonus points, we now have what we call wild cards. The 11th and 12th place points positions can now be locked in on wins alone. At this point, can we just pick a points format and stick to it for yeah. the next decade? Probably not. 2013 would see changes to the car once again, introducing the Generation 6. This car's right. design was a little less bulky and was made for brand recognition. NASCAR had been lacking that for the past few years and they wanted to go back to this specific thing. Heaven forbid you speak out against it. I, I'm not going to try to be the pessimist, but it, it wasn't as good as I would hope. But there's right. a lot of room for improvement for this car. It's, it's going to be tough. It's going to take a little while for us to, to get uh, these cars driving as good as what we had the, the Generation 5. Wow. Okay. You know, I mean, that's candid. Point. I like it. There wasn't a lead change under green in the last quarter of the race. Let's stop there, though. This isn't about the racing. It's about NASCAR trying to censor what these drivers are saying. Denny Hamlin gave his opinion. His opinion. Hey, he didn't yeah. threaten anyone or say the car was junk. He just said it it's was take a while. progress. And for that, got fined? There was also a that's, yeah, that's rough. fiasco when he added Jeff Gordon as the 13th driver, which made no sense because he had nothing to do with it. He wasn't directly impacted by the whole Michael Waltrip racing scandal at Richmond. And then for some reason, Truex was knocked out. I, I don't know. I, I really don't get it. But yeah, I don't get it. the racing product that has come from the Gen 6 car has not lived up to Beating expectations. Beating pumped back on. 2014 is considered, without a doubt, the greatest season for the Gen 6. Rather than building on this package, NASCAR decided to go with something different heading into the 2015 season. And we haven't seen this type of race. Oh, that was tight, the two car in there. Oh, did I mention NASCAR changed its playoff format once again? Of course they did. It not only expands from 12 to 16 drivers, but points don't even matter anymore. All you need now is it's, a win and yeah, you are in. Yeah, win and you're in. This is now the fourth points format. That's the one we have at the moment, right? Win and you're in. What a mess. But you're also, like, you can get in on points. He not only added group qualifying at plate tracks, but he also instigated that whole Logano versus Kenza fiasco. It's just, it's idiotic to be out here doing this anyway there's no sense in being able to try to put on some cute show for whatever the hell this is then you got a guy out there in desperation doing this crap like this i mean it's just there's there's no reason to be out here these guys have spent six months working on these cars busting their ass on these cars to go out there and have some guy out of desperation do that crap but it ain't his fault it's not it's nascar's fault yeah fair enough out here in the middle of this crap for nothing I and that's, that's why he's one of the best commentators this season he's been fucking dope so i thought let me know what you think about clint in the in the booth this season but I wouldn't say it's frustrating. I, I mean, think it's the good. The frustrating part is just dealing with this whole system, which makes no sense whatsoever. So it's hard to be, it's hard to stand behind NASCAR when nobody, all everybody I talked to up and down pit road doesn't understand why we're doing this. So it's um, 
Maybe I need to reset down and educate it a little bit. We gotta find a better <laughs> system. I mean, you have the fucking shite in there. Cars, and then you have this roulette wheel for qualifying. It doesn't seem like it's the proper system, but hey, it is what it is. And we could be here smiling, getting belted up, going back out for the second round. But it's rather mature for a bush. It is what it is. Like it's the proper system, but hey, it is what it is, and we could be here smiling. He does have that shit eating grin as well, though, doesn't he? Round, Wonder if they got that from their mom or their dad. I don't know. It's the same shit eating grin, though, so you know they grew up around it. For the next round, uh, and Matt Kenseth has run so well. That's a smart thing to do. You got to give that team a lot of credit. And Kenseth cleared by Logano, baby. No, nope. Kenseth takes him out. Like Literally him took him out, out drove him into the wall. I've, I've watched another video with that on it, actually. Oh my gosh, what a mess! Kenseth would be suspended two races for this incident. 2016 had two massive issues. Number one was the caution clock for the truck series. Which made no sense. I mean, this thing was coming on every 20 minutes at every trick series. What's well, a I caution I clock? I don't know what NASCAR was trying to accomplish with this. And then you have Brian France publicly endorsing Oh, wow. Well. All right. I don't care where you are on the Stay political Stay out of politics, spectrum. mate. That's Just the thing. Keep like, your goddamn politics out of NASCAR. People, that's what I was about to say. People would be saying, keep your politics out of NASCAR. Keep your politics out of this. Keep your politics out of football. Keep your politics out of that. You know, and it's like... When the fucking CEO is going and campaigning for cunts on the political, like, it's a bit hard to keep politics out of it, isn't it? You know? Like, fuck. This actually angered the owner of the Truck Series title sponsor, Camping World. But yeah. go on to publicly denounce this endorsement. Yeah, yeah fair enough. just feels like a fever dream at this You don't speak for all of us, cunt. But you're seen to speak for all of us. So don't fucking speak. Sorry. Like, fuck. Endorsement. 2017 just feels like a fever dream at this point, as we now have stage racing. I'll be honest, as a hardcore fan, this has kind of grown on me, but for most of the hardcore I don't mind stages. Fans, they could not be more divided on this topic. You also have the famous crash clock added to this. You What's are a crash clock? To work on your car for more than oh, right, that's it. If you go past the crash clock, even if your car is still good enough to finish the race, you are now out of it. Oh, yeah. That's bullshit. There's this awkward moment with the defending champion, Martin Trex Jr. at the table. Just look at this. Just look at the disrespect. He, he just, yeah, he just handed it and ran off. Where NASCAR has not only hit record lows in ratings. Have a look at his face and reaction, too. Like, just look at he's like, car is bad. Good enough to All right. The race. You are now out of it. Oh, yeah. And then there was this awkward moment with the defending champion, Martin Trex Jr. at the table. Just look at this. Just look at the disrespect. We now have a ride to 28. It's like I know, right? Because somebody was like, what the fuck? Hit record lows in ratings, but in morals. I think you know what's next. Brian France is facing charges of aggravated driving while intoxicated and criminal possession of a control. Wow. Which police say. Wow. Remember what he said about old mate? Al Capone? Fucking. Like. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yes. Call back. My that's a fucking probably one of the most embarrassing things to happen to the sport in the last few decades. Yeah, that's rough. But there's a few problems that come out of this. So the first one is just the surface value. Uh, to be fair though, I would probably gain a little bit more respect for Roger Goodell if he came out with some fucking coke in his car while he was done for DUI. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I wouldn't. Don't get me wrong. Uh, that's that's a joke. Just to be clear, don't do drugs and drive them, okay? Drugs are bad, okay? Um, but, like, yeah, like, you, you know the joke I was making. Because he's already a dickhead, so it's like you can't get... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Jokes aren't funny when you explain them, Jules. Anyway. the sport in the last few decades. But there's a few problems that come out of this. So the first one is just the surface value it took away from Chase Elliott's win. You know, his first win. This story that brought all NASCAR together for a grand total of about 20 hours before <laughs> this arrest was made public. It's just That's amazing rough. how much bad luck NASCAR can have. That's rough PR. for That's him. another big issue is PR. Your CEO of a driving sport is arrested for a DUI <laughs> and it has, is intoxicated with drug use. Actually, yeah, that's rough. The horrible look. Oxys as well. That's pretty fucking... NASCAR. Like, that's pretty full-on. only Brian France could do. But my biggest issue 
with this whole thing. Like I know people that can't get off the couch to go and take a piss and end up pissing themselves when they've taken oxys. How the fuck's a cunt operating a car? Anyway. Like that is moderately impressive, but somebody who only from like a from what not impressive is in like oh well that's impressive, but like wow. Like that's how has his body done that? How has he achieved that? You know what I mean? Like he must have a tolerance for that shit. Like Anyway, has to be the more focusing on the wrong part. NASCAR. How much is something that only Brian France could do? But my biggest issue with this whole thing has to be the moral issue with NASCAR. How many people knew about this? Because somebody who, more than likely, from what all of the rumors were, had been using for a very long time. Yeah. How many people? let him continue on like this for how, how many enablers did he have that's the biggest problem here and that's where i think it brings up the most problems is the moral issue because i think it is morally abhorrent well, i'm kind of born with a silver spoon in his mouth because there had to probably doesn't know anyone that isn't a yes man every day that could see what he was doing to himself he was an a he is an addict or was mm. that in my opinion is the thing that's been sort of shoved under the rug by both people in NASCAR who just want to go away and don't want to talk about it, and with fans who really seem not to want to address it as much, more make it as a joke. And while you can make jokes about it, it's still something serious that how corrupt is the sport? That is, I think, the main question this race out of all this. How corrupt is the sanctioning body of NASCAR? Brian France has I mean, been succeeded by his uncle Jim France. Under Brian France, is Jim the one that's in charge NASCAR now? Now looks like this: a 55% drop in television ratings since its peak in 2005, an illegitimate championship, a scorned fan base, and also uncertainty. To put it bluntly, Brian France destroyed what his grandfather and father had built, and Ross. for that, he is viewed to me as a NASCAR bust. Yeah, fair and enough. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys. That's a so full-on video. So imagine ruining the company that you fucked two generations of your family before you had fucking built. Like, that's that's pretty full-on, if you think about it. You know what I mean? Like, that's... Let me know what you think in the comments. I love the videos by this bloke. As I said, check the, check the video that we just watched. If you don't want to watch it with my reactions and stuff like that, if you just want to watch it. Um, or if you want to do me a solid, because, you know, they help me out by letting me watch the videos and stuff, just go like their video as well as liking mine. Hit the subscribe. Subscribe to their content as well. Everyone on YouTube, there's room for a, there's room enough in this yard for all of us, right? It doesn't have to be a competition and all that jazz. Uh, he says as he uses someone else's content to make content, but you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think about Brian France or if uh, or if they went over the top. Let me know if they didn't go hard enough. Answer the questions that I asked throughout the video and all that jazz. Hit up the comments section. And yeah, these guys are my patrons. I like making money. It's pretty much the easiest way of making money on YouTube is when people give me money on Patreon. Other than that, it's with ad revenue or with affiliate marketing. Feel free to click the links in my description for any one of those three companies, Vance Global, Milton and Grooming, or Quality Sunglasses. And yeah, code SQUID will get you a discount. I think it's 15%, I think it's 10%, 15%, and 10%, but I could be wrong. Uh, write the code SQUID in and you'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna keep recording stuff. I'll see you when I look at ya. You'll see me when you look at me. Thanks for watching.